here um, at the Shoah Foundation. Okay, what is this place? So this is the uh, place where the 55,000 testimonies that were collected of the Holocaust survivors and witnesses to genocide, originally by Steven Spielberg and then donated to the University of Southern California, have their home. Um, they are preserved here in perpetuity so that that story can be told all around the world. Um, but also um, here we teach, we research, um, and we ensure that this story reaches the, the globe. We just saw something that is so profoundly moving. Your latest VR with a survivor, um, 86 year, year old, old yeah. going back to the camp where he lost his mother and his father and his sister Sabine. And right, Sabina, and out there you have a, a almost a, like a hologram, or you will be having a hologram of this person. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that new technology? Well, we're trying to figure out how do we tell these stories in the future. You know, many new technologies are available to us, but just because they exist doesn't mean to say we should use them. Um, and if we are going to use them, we have to figure out how do we use them in a way that's going to for that story to live in an appropriate way. So the VR piece uh, called The Last Goodbye features Pinkas Kutter going back to Majdanek for the final time in order to say goodbye to his family. Um, we, you know, we, go, we go through the camp with him and experience what it's like to be there with him. But that's not the end of the story because actually there are, that then stimulates many questions. And so Dimensions in Testimony is a project we developed so that you can actually converse with video. Um, so he answered over a thousand questions about his life and now using natural language processing, voice recognition and natural language processing, you can uh, literally talk with the video and have the questions that are on your mind answered. So long into the future, he'll be able to answer the questions that people have on their mind about this terrible period of history. I was reduced to so many tears watching it and it, it makes me very sad just thinking about it, but the, the challenge is that we're not finished. Right now, you're an expert on genocide, which blows my mind. But right now, the Rohingya, uh, you're very, very involved in that. Can we well, talk about how we can help? What right, can we yeah, do? the latest you know, of, a, of many, many genocides since the Second World War are those out of the Rohingya, which happened in 2017, less than six months ago, um, in Myanmar. Um, 650,000 currently displaced from Myanmar, but the word displaced doesn't even cover it. They have had to flee for their lives. Many have lost their lives. Sexual violence, is, uh, the rate of sexual violence is very high, the killing of children. Uh, and torture and maiming. So we've taken those testimonies, um, not just to document, but so that they can be advocates for their own cause, so that we hear their voice and we, we can relate more closely to them. What we can do, we can start a highlight among our peers and on our social media uh, um, channels and so forth, that this is an ongoing crisis, it's an ongoing genocide, and unless the international community acts, these, these million people uh, will have no future at all. And that's on us right now. And you know, it all starts with a single, I don't like you. I think you're creepy. You're not me, you're the other. I mean, ultimately, the horror of genocide starts with individual actions. Well, I think it's about values, isn't it? I mean, basically, if you, if you have deep respect for others, it doesn't matter who they are, then you aren't going to take actions that are going to harm them. So that's the basis of all this. It's fundamental to everything. That's why we actually work with primary school children, interestingly enough. So on the one hand, we have this kind of global mission to stop genocide, and yet perhaps some of the most important work we do is with eight and nine-year-olds, because if you can get those values right first, um, and you can see that you know the actions, for example, of the, the young people uh, after this shooting, who you know were literally in a classroom working on uh, content that we provided uh, have then taken action and have taken the issue of gun violence into their own hands and they're saying this is our issue we're going to act. That to me is a kind of education that in spite of the terror and the horror you get something really beneficial from it and that's what we hope we can continue to contribute. Are you hopeful about the future of mankind, people kind, um, if, if we look at the data, no. If I look at the people that we engage with on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm very hopeful. Uh, I'm not sure that we'll ultimately we'll overcome ourselves as human beings. This impulse to kill and to be violent, it seems very deep in us and innate. However, there are so many actors in this world who are doing the right thing at the right time, um, and we work with them, and yes. they're the ones that we're going to stick with. And we have Steven Spielberg as the first person we have to thank for this place. Absolutely. 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 You're a visionary, you're extraordinary, I love your use of media and the arts, and I'm honored to be here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Real pleasure. So check Thank out showa.usc.shoah USC Show Foundation. Oh, but on, what's the online? sfi.usc.edu. We will write it out.
but thank you very much for